Someone was trying to get the FTC involved because the battery was smaller. I'm like, relax, fam. Calm your tits. We don't need to do that, okay? Let's make sense of it. We lost the battery, but the processor is top notch. Welcome to Chilled Fossil, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Fossil, and today we are going over the Galaxy S22 that I picked up yesterday from Best Buy. Uh, I've been using it for over 24 hours now, so I picked it up Friday at 10 a.m. It is now Sunday, 1 a.m., uh, and I've got quite a lot to say about it, especially the things that stood out to me right off the get-go that I think you're going to find really important if you're thinking about buying this phone. Now, make sure to be subscribed because I am going to do a full in-depth review in my regular studio of this device, comparing it to other things like the Z Flip 3, so you don't want to miss out on that. Right when I bought this phone, I'm actually, uh, the case I have on this device is a Spigen case. I've linked it down below. It's the Spigen Ultra Hybrid, matte black. Uh, it feels really nice. It keeps the shine of this phone. But that's the thing that you notice right off the bat when you open up the box is how good gorgeous this thing is it is one of in my opinion my humble opinion one of the most gorgeous uh phones so far that ha uh, that samsung has produced and i will also say that in my personal opinion samsung has finally surpassed apple when it comes to build quality and when it comes to aesthetically pleasing devices like if you put this next to the iphone 13 and i could run any os on the device and told me to pick which one i wanted to use you're I, i'm 100 percent going with this color and with this device so obviously with a phone like that you feel excited right off the bat but no 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 because one of the biggest complaints we are getting about this device and i've had time now to kind of test it out is the actual battery ladies and gentlemen this device is getting a lot of slack okay or flack i should call it uh for its short battery life we're seeing this on not only you know by actual um uh, review websites but also by people on like bestbuy.com amazon.com all of these reviewers are really slamming it for its battery so is it really that bad well when I first got the phone, took it out of the box right there, I charged it to 100%. I then, as soon as it was 100%, I decided to, okay, uh, download all the critical apps that I like to use. We're talking Instagram, uh, WhatsApp, Amazon, all that good stuff. And I downloaded and installed games that I like to play. For example, Genshin Impact, the most intense game available on the uh, Google Play Store. Genshin Impact being the one that takes the longest, it took about 25 to 30 minutes to have the entire thing installed and operating. My battery went from 100% down to 75%. So I lost about 25 to 30% just downloading all kinds of apps, but very um, intensive apps as well. Over that period in time, what's interesting is that the phone really didn't heat up all that much. The previous generation, the S21, it did heat up. I remember it distinctly because it was kind of alarming. This time, however, with this phone, um, it did get warm, but it definitely didn't heat up to the point where I'm thinking, okay, I'm maybe pushing this processor a bit too far. And that's the second thing that I kind of wanted to talk about before we get into battery is this Snapdragon processor that everyone's excited about. That's some technical jargon that I don't really understand and that I don't really care about. But what this really means as far as a user perspective is concerned is that this thing has the power now to be able to handle all kinds of apps that you might throw at it we're talking the highest intensity uh games and i did have a whole uh session uh playing genshin impact on this so let me see uh it's actually i didn't even turn it off so oh now i did but it's still running and operating um and i didn't have any problems any kind of slowdown no kind of lag while i was running this on the uh, the new qualcomm snapdragon 8 gen 1. so the the processor in this is top notch and what's even better is that samsung has promised four years worth of updates for this device so we're talking right now it's android 12 we're talking all the way through to android 16 for the next four years you're going to get updates and security updates for your device so all of that's great but let's take it back to the battery situation that's the main problem that everyone's having so like i said i opened my device 100 full charge 
I download all these intensive apps and we're down to 75, 70%. Okay, that's a one-time thing. We're not downloading these daily. So from that point all the way to the evening, like we're talking uh, 8, 9 p.m. So I picked this up 10 a.m. At 8, 9 p.m., that's when I started my first charge. And that was after downloading Genshin Impact, having a good 30 to an hour long session playing this game. Uh, I don't usually do games like that, but I did it because of my upcoming review where I do a full in-depth analysis. So I played games, I worked on messages, I, you know, Instagram photos, things like that. I did use the camera quite a bit as well. That's a gorgeous screen, by the way. But I used the camera, I did film in 8K, I would never do that. So I did all of these things that I generally wouldn't do. And I still got down to 8, 9 p.m. where it was nearing 0% and I put it back up on charge. Uh, so to tackle the first part, uh, although it's not the biggest battery, the chipset is very optimized in using the battery very efficiently. And I really appreciate that about this device. It does use the battery extremely efficiently. Not as good as the iPhone 13. I will say that right off the bat. I think the small iPhone 13 is does have better battery than this. Uh, but in no ways is this, in my opinion, too lacking. It's not, you know, obviously didn't get me throughout the entire day, but it's not terrible. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, though, is when it came to charging up this device, obviously in the box, I'll do an unboxing in my full review, but you don't get a, you know, dedicated charging block or anything like that. You get a USB-C wire, basically. Um, so I've set it up on a regular generic charging cable, and it, 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 it told me it was going to take five hours to reach full charge. The charging capabilities of the S22 Plus and the S22 Ultra feature 45 watt fast charging, this one has 25 watt so it doesn't charge the fastest either it has the smallest battery and it it doesn't charge the fastest which is it, it's kind of sad it, re it really is it's annoying as well uh especially when you're thinking to yourself hey i'm buying a flagship here this is the one i want to show you guys um as you can see of all the recent galaxy devices that samsung has dropped the s22 is all the way at the bottom when it comes to battery life we're talking again nine and a half hours based on official specs of usage which isn't obviously it's the worst it's it's the worst of all these other samsung devices so what does that mean should you go for last year's samsung galaxy s21 if you're getting it on a bargain I would say no, because it doesn't have the extra 1.3 hours of battery life. Is it worth saving one or two hundred dollars? Call it two hundred dollars. I don't. I I actually will say no because the processor in this, for me at least, makes up for that. Most of the time, I don't care to get into these processors and all that kind of jargon. But the processor in this is so good that it's using this battery life extremely efficiently. The body of the device is not heating up, and I'm experiencing zero lag even as I play the most intensive games on the Google Play Store. The same could not be said about last year's version, which did get extremely hot. Um, and I did have lag playing Genshin Impact on that device. So that's my take on it. You're sacrificing 1.3 hours of battery life, but you're getting really good performance in the actual time you're using your device. And I think that's more important for me than to have to put up for with lag and, and like bugs and things like that. Plus, you get four four years of um, support from Samsung with updates and things like that. So I definitely think that's worth something as well. And you're getting this gorgeous device, which you didn't get last year. I'm sure they have pictures of it here. This year's green is so much more gorgeous than last year's kind of plastic backed uh, phone. Uh, it's definitely better than the FE, which just kind of looks cheap. I mean, Samsung knocked it out of the park when it comes to the design and the build quality of this device. It just feels really good you you won't know it until you try it basically that's what i'm saying and that also takes me to the second thing i want to talk about the camera wow so i've been using the z flip 3 for the past six months and you know you kind of limit it but i said in my z flip 3 review that i don't really use the camera all that much i'm definitely not shooting 8k and when i do take pictures the pictures on that are perfectly fine but this really takes it to the next level Today I did film in 8K just for my in-depth review coming out later. 
and it looked amazing. Um, I took photos and the photos are noticeably better on this than they are on the Z Flip 3. And it's a lot more pleasurable taking these photos because I don't know if it's an update that only is on the S22 and not on the Z Flip, but um, the zoom in and zoom out uh, being indicated by actual numbers, making it so much easier to set up your shot. Um, and the whole like user interface of the camera itself is actually a lot more friendlier on the S22 than it is on the Z Flip 3. And I really enjoyed that about this device. Um, so I will say that when you're looking at the camera, uh, you're not missing out on anything, especially if you're thinking about this and the S22 Plus, they have the same cameras, you're not really missing out on any of the camera specs. So you're getting the same goodness when it comes to this one as well, but in a much smaller form factor. And let's talk about that because that's the main reason you and I bought this device. It's not because it was $200 cheaper. I, I mean, I have the money to, you know, buy the bigger one. I have the money to buy the Ultra if I wanted to. But the reason I went with this is because unlike everybody else, I'm not into phablets. You know, I'm into smaller devices like the Flip, like this one, that's really easy to pocket, that when I take it out, one-handed use is super easy for me. Uh, and on that front, this is Samsung's tiniest screen in the last few years. Like, there hasn't been a Samsung device this tiny for a really long time. Even the S21 had a bigger screen than this. I think that was 6.2 or 6.3, maybe it was 6. Yeah, 6.2 or 6.3. This is like six inches. So it is a much smaller screen than the previous generation, but it, it does everything I need it to do. Um, but it has the same resolution, the same quality as the S22 Plus. So you're not missing out on any, you know, and any of the resolution. It's just everything's on a smaller display. And there's something that I've, I, I really appreciate about that. Having everything in a much more compact, easy to digest display when I'm on my phone. When I'm on my computer or a tablet, I want that bigger display because I'm multitasking. I'm doing productive things. But I'm not really being productive on my phone. That's just me. I'm not, you know, signing documents and running all kinds of apps to two stories. And I'm not doing any of that. So for something like this, the more compact it is, the better. The one thing I will say is typing right out the box was a little bit weird because of the screen and how tiny it is. Um, I was making a lot of spelling mistakes. It's just the nature of getting used to a smaller keyboard, but it wasn't so small that it was getting in the way. So I'm sure with time, it's just a little bit of a learning curve, just getting used to it. So what would I say about this device? Should you buy it, uh, you know, right off the bat, 24 hours later? I would say you should buy this if you're looking for an iPhone alternative, you're trying to get away from the Android ecosystem or the Apple ecosystem. Uh, you're looking for something that is tiny, that is easily pocketable. Um, and you're just looking for a phone that's good for general use, something that can get almost everything done, that has the power, the processor to get anything done. This is a really good phone for generally a lot of people. For people with more specific needs, for people that need a phone that can get them throughout not just one day, but maybe one day and a half, that need that long extended battery life, uh, that need a bigger screen, frankly, this isn't obviously going to do. But for most people, I think this battery life and the power behind this phone is really good, more than enough and more than uh, what a lot of people will be using anyways. Um, I think I only pushed the phone when I was playing Genshin Impact and that was even for like a whole 30 minutes to an hour. So I think nearing the hour mark is when it started getting, you know, noticeably hotter. So that's when I started actually pushing this processor a little bit. Obviously I was eating the battery a lot more at that point as well, but not a lot of us are playing hour long games on their phones. Even I don't do that usually. If it wasn't for a review, I'm not playing an hour long game on my device, not happening. So in my point of view, it's a really good device. It's still a solid device. I know for the haters, they took away the micro SD card slot. They took away uh, it, it, the resolution is worse than like the S20. Um, you know, I know, I know, I understand that. Even though they stopped selling those old devices, 
I still like this phone better than those because I appreciate good build, good build quality. I appreciate um, a screen that although the resolution isn't the highest, it's so vibrant and so dense. I appreciate that more. It's just beautiful to look at. Uh, the form factor, the size, the small bezels, and not only that, the boxy design, I, I'm in love. I absolutely love it. And so I think the next thing for me now is putting this up against my Z Flip 3 and deciding on which one I want to take moving forward. And in order to know that, make sure to subscribe, follow me on my Instagram and Twitter uh, so that you guys can stay in the loop about which one I take moving forward, which one beats up for me. Is it the S22 or is it going to be the Z Flip 3? Make sure to be subscribed to find out.